Shalom from Israel to all of the Daystar viewers around the world. I'm Moshe Bartzvi, the producer and founder of Israel Now News. We at Israel Now News are dedicated to bringing you the full story and the truth about Israel from Israel. It's written in the Holy Bible when David said in Psalm 25:5, Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. And God says in Zechariah 8:16, These are the things that you shall do. Speak out the truth to one another. Judge with truth and judgment to peace in your gates. And always search for the truth, and the truth shall set you free. John 8:31. I hope you enjoyed the program. God bless you from Jerusalem. Shalom, shalom. Welcome to Israel Now News. I'm Yochanan El Rome. And I'm Rebecca Rand. In our top story, Palestinians are continuing their terror campaign. Islamic extremists are working overtime in their efforts to maim and kill innocent Israeli civilians. Last week, a 22-year-old Palestinian woman affiliated with Mahmoud Abbas's own Fatah party stabbed an Israeli man in Gush Etzion. Just hours later, a Palestinian driver ran over a man and fled the scene in what authorities believe is a vehicular terrorist attack. The Israeli man suffered major head wounds and later died of his injuries in hospital. Authorities have arrested three Arab men in connection with that attack. PA leader Mahmoud Abbas is still inciting Palestinians to violence, and Israeli leaders insist that he is to blame for the bloodshed. Rebecca has more on that story. That's right, Yochanan. Showing his true colors as anything but a partner in peace, Mahmoud Abbas addressed the Arab League last week where he spewed anti-Israel rhetoric from a podium in Cairo. The leader of the PA said that Palestinians will never recognize Israel as a Jewish state. Abbas has been accused of inciting Palestinians to the violence which has swept through the country in the form of vehicular and stabbing terrorist attacks. The Palestinian news agency is also working overtime to spread anti-Israel propaganda and indoctrinate the Palestinian people to violence. Last week, the Palestinian News Network reported that Israel killed five Palestinians in the month of October. They were referring to terrorists who were killed during attacks on Israelis. The reporter claimed that the two Palestinians who used their cars to commit terrorist attacks, killing a three-month-old baby, a 22-year-old woman, and a Druze police officer, were shot in cold blood by Israeli soldiers after what they claimed were unwitting car accidents. The reporter honored the murderers by calling them martyrs and depicted them as Palestinian heroes. In a related story, an Islamic leader was caught on tape calling for Israel and America's destruction from the Temple Mount. Ali Abu Ahmad was recorded calling the Jews the most vile of creatures, and he prayed that Allah would enable them to cut off their heads. The Temple Mount has been a flashpoint of violence, and Palestinian and Jordanian leaders often claim that Israel is trying to take over Al-Aqsa, inflaming the Palestinians, who in turn stage violent riots. The Muslim Waqf, which controls the Temple Mount, restricts non-Muslim access to the site and forbids Jews and Christians from praying there. The French Parliament held a symbolic vote last week in recognition of a Palestinian state. This despite vehement objections from members of the government and former French President Nicolas Sarkozy, who said that the unilateral measure is without merit because there is no peace agreement in place. Some lawmakers accuse the parliament of being anti-Zionist and operating with a clear anti-Semitic agenda. MP Mayor Habib pointed out that last summer, members of the French parliament participated in a Hamas rally where protesters chanted death to the Jews. He said France does not comprehend the threat of Islamic terrorism and that passing this resolution is tantamount to legitimizing terrorism. Habib said he spoke with the French Prime Minister, who understood the situation, but could not convince Parliament to reverse course. Habib warned that French support of a Palestinian state will make France irrelevant in the Middle East. And he added that Paris is essentially abandoning the only democracy in the Middle East that protects human rights and instead is backing a terrorist organization. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu released a statement saying that unilateral recognition of a Palestinian state by France would be a grave mistake. Pope Francis and the head of the Orthodox Church met last week to discuss the plight of Christians in the Middle East. 
Thousands of Christians were massacred in Iraq and Syria when the Islamic State came to power, and thousands more have been expelled from their homes in the cradle of Christianity. Pope Francis and the Orthodox Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew I met last week, saying that they cannot allow Christianity to be driven out of the region. Pope Francis condemned what he called barbaric violence by the Islamic State against Christians and other religious minorities. He also demanded that Christians who have been forced from their homes and churches be allowed to return when the conflict ends. It is important to note that Christians are persecuted in nearly every country in the Middle East except for Israel, where their right to practice their religion freely is protected by the Israeli government. Israel has once again called out the United Nations for its blatant anti-Israel and pro-Palestinian bias. After remaining silent and refusing to condemn a wave of vicious Palestinian terror attacks, which claimed the lives of nine Israelis, representatives of the United Nations in Israel publicly criticized the Jewish state for deciding to demolish the homes of the terrorists who perpetrated the heinous attacks. These same UN officials remained absolutely silent when Egypt demolished hundreds of homes belonging to Palestinians on the Rafah border just a week before. A statement released by Israel's delegation to the United Nations in Geneva said, We regret that despite the escalating trend of family evacuations and house demolitions throughout the entire Middle East region, the special rapporteur on adequate housing has never commented on the issue before, but deemed it necessary to make a statement regretting the demolition of the house of a terrorist who killed in cold blood a three-month-old baby, a young woman, and injured six others. The Israeli mission went on to say that UN representatives have turned a blind eye to terrorism, incitement, celebrations of violence, and encouragement of extremism carried out by Palestinians and their leaders. Parliamentarians from around the world have collectively condemned the wave of Palestinian terror attacks in Jerusalem. The MPs, all members of Israel Allies caucuses, signed a petition with states, We strongly condemn the recent spate of terrorist attacks carried out by Palestinians in Jerusalem. We call upon our governments and the international community to hold accountable those responsible for inciting these attacks. The specific targeting of innocent men, women and children is deplorable and violates all codes of human conduct. E.J. Kimball, the U.S. Director of the Israel Allies Foundation said, As a wave of terror has descended upon the residents of Jerusalem, it is imperative that the world speaks out against these atrocities and those that incite such horrific attacks. Praising the initiative, Josh Reinstein, the director of the Knesset Christian Allies Caucus said, Once again, we see that faith-based diplomacy is producing unprecedented support for Israel from elected officials and governments around the world. People who read their Bibles realize that Jerusalem was, is, and will remain the capital of the Jewish state. Israeli government officials and surviving refugees gathered last week to mark the expulsion of more than 900,000 Jews from Arab states in the Middle East and North Africa. After the announcement of the establishment of the Jewish State of Israel in 1948, Jews who had established ancient communities throughout the Middle East were suddenly forced to flee with only the clothes on their backs. Their property and money was seized by the Arabs and they were abruptly expelled from their homes. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu released a statement saying, Today we mark the expulsion and exit of hundreds of thousands of Jews from Arab nations and Iran during the early years of the establishment of the State of Israel. Arab states forced the Jews living in their territory to leave their homes and property behind. In some cases the expulsion was accompanied by riots and violence against Jews. The State of Israel has declared November 29th the official Jewish Refugee Day in commemoration of the plight of these Jews. Those involved in the project have pledged to increase awareness about the Jewish refugee issue in order to one day gain recognition and compensation. More than one million Jewish children have been killed by abortion in Israel since 1948. Israel is currently engaged in a demographic war for its very survival as a Jewish state. Imagine what a difference one million more Jews would have made for Israel. Friends of Efrat saves the lives of thousands of children every year by providing support to pregnant women in distress. Since 1977, Efrat has saved over 30,000 lives 
is recognized as a world leader in preventing abortions. You can play a major role in Israel's survival now by helping us save Israel's unborn children. That concludes the news portion of our show. Stay tuned for Ask the Source with Josh Reinstein. Hello and welcome to Ask the Source. I'm your host, Josh Reinstein, and we're here on our beautiful rooftop studio in Jerusalem. My guest today is Shani Simkowitz, the executive director of the Gush Etzion Foundation. Shani, thank you for being on the show. Glad to be here. Shani, tell our viewers a little bit about what is Gush Etzion. Gush Etzion is south of Jerusalem. It has a very important biblical history and modern day history. As we can read in the portions of the week, this is where Abraham took Isaac up to the binding, Bar Kokhba had his battles, King Herod has his summer palace, and much more. And in modern day times, there were four attempts to settle this region, and one day before Ben-Gurion declared the state of Israel. There was a very brave battle where all the defenders fell here one day before the declaration of the state of Israel in 1948. So what does the Gush Etzion Foundation actually do? The Gush Etzion Foundation was started 15 years ago to represent the communities and the residents with many different projects in the fields of education, preserving the heritage and the history of Gush Etzion, social welfare, religious welfare, humanitarian needs, and security needs. At the beginning of the summer, we had a horrible terrorist attack where three Jewish students were murdered, hitchhiking their way home. Uh, I understand that the Gush Etzion Foundation is doing a lot to memorial these people. What are some of the initiatives that you're doing? Well, there are two very big projects. One of them, as you know, the boys studied in the yeshiva of the School of Higher Learning, which is a high school in Kibbutz Kfar Etzion, where 66 years ago that brave battle took place. And they're in a temporary uh, campus and we're building a new campus in one of the communities called Neve Daniel, so the, the uh, school will be named after them. And from the place where they were kidnapped, we're making a promenade or sort of a boardwalk where there'll be proper uh, walking area and bicycle paths with three lookout towers, one in the memory of each of the boys, and it's going to be called the Boys Promenade in their memory. You know, once they were murdered, uh, es es things escalated with Gaza, and it led to Operation Protective Edge. Why was that operation so essential to the people of Israel? Well, you know, we say that there are things that happen from above, and you can't just go in and begin a war. And everyone was saying, well, if they knew about these tunnels, why didn't they just blow them up before? You can't just go in and start a war. And basically, we, be f we feel that not in vain, these boys were kidnapped so that there was a reason why we could give a response to the Hamas in Aza. And since we had uh, intelligence information, we were able to go in and uh, locate those tunnels and save the uh, Jewish communities down there and also greater Israel. Because the plan was on the new year of the Jewish people that these uh, terrorists would come out from under the ground in the tunnels shoot up all the Jewish communities there and the people, hijack the women and plant them in Aza so Israel wouldn't bomb Aza. And so they basically saved a lot of Israel and the Jewish communities down there. You know, Bible-believing Christians are some of the greatest supporters of Judea and Samaria. Why do you think that Bible-believing Christians are standing so strongly with the heartland of Israel? Because I believe that they believe what it says, that those that will go with Israel will be blessed, and those that will not will be cursed, and that God gave this land to the Jewish people, and it's our responsibility and our commitment to live in the land of Israel. If a Jew can live anywhere in the world except buying uh, real estate in the Arab, Arab Emirates, he certainly has a right to live freely in the heart of the Jewish people. As I said, we're reading in the portions of the week where Isaac was, where Abraham was, in the beginning, Genesis. This is where it took place. And if you visit Gush Etzion, you'll see the heartland, you'll see the path of the patriarchs, and you'll understand that this is our heritage, this is our legacy, this is our birthright. So what is the Gush Etzion uh, Foundation doing to educate 
people about the truth of Judea and Samaria. So first of all, we welcome everyone to come. And when you stand on this land and you see the legitimate rights of the Jewish people to this area, you will understand the life testimony of historical excavations on the path where our forefathers worked, walked. We, we educate schools all over Israel and tourists and all kinds of groups to come and see from modern days to biblical times. My backyard, I live on the eastern side of Gush Etzion in the community of Tekoa where the prophet Amos is. I look out of my window and I see King Herod's palace. And I visited there in the past, uh, just recently, to see the marvelous excavations that are showing what Jewish life and what testimony, what was here thousands of years ago. We read in the book of Amos about the vineyards that will become, give fruit again and produce wine. And, and we're seeing that happen today. What kind of effect does seeing the fulfillment of biblical prophecy have on people who believe in the Bible when they come visit these lands? I think that the biggest blessing that I say is that I live here, that I have my children and my grandchildren who are growing up here. And everything that was burnt down in biblical history and burnt down in modern day history in the War of Independence, those vineyards are blossoming and blooming and winning prize wines all over the world. And the communities are growing. I'm in my community last year, this past year, we opened up seven first grade classes. So I think that's the modern day miracle that today we're back here, we're growing and we're here to stay. Shani, there are literally tens of millions of people watching this show. What message do you have for our viewing audience? Come and visit, get involved. You'll be able to see our website and we're waiting to see you and come out to see the P Patriarch's Way and our history and be a partner in our projects. Thank you, Shani, for being on the show. And thank you for tuning in to Ask the Source. I'm your host, Josh Reinstein. Now back to the studio. It is heartbreaking to learn that there are over 40,000 abortions in Israel every year, many of which are due to financial concerns. The Efrat organization saves the lives of thousands of Jewish children each year by providing support to pregnant women in distress. Please help us save thousands more. Up next, Shining Light from Israel. Israel, the Promised Land. While Israel strives to be the spiritual capital of the world, thousands of women terminate their pregnancies every year, often against their will due to economic or social pressures. My name is Almog, and this my story. Almog has an amazing story and she's a wonderful volunteer. She really knows both sides of the story, having had an abortion and having saved her first child, basically by coming to us, by getting to Efrat, getting our help, getting our support, emotionally and uh, financially, and she's wonderful. Seven years ago, when I was in the army, I found out that I'm pregnant. People pushed me to have an abortion. I really didn't want to do it. It was a girl. Every day, I very miss her. Until today, I regret having the abortion. Back in 1977, the Efrat organization was founded to help women like Almog. Since that time, Efrat has grown and in recent years saves the lives of over 2,000 children every year. The women who turn to us all have financial difficulties. They often have other problems as well, if they're with, with their relationship issues or all kinds of stories. And Efrat does its best to embrace these women by giving them amazing volunteers. We have wonderful women who are a willing ear and a soft shoulder for these women, connect them up with, uh, with therapists, with counselors, with all kinds of different things, as well as giving the financial support that gives them the courage to have the baby. Women who turn to a fraud are promised and given everything a baby could need, including a brand new crib, 
quality stroller, baby clothes, diapers, and a baby kit, which includes everything a baby could possibly need. And now, let's go back to Almog and hear the rest of her story. In a way there, I found I was pregnant again. My parents wanted me to have an abortion again and go to college. I really, really, really want to keep this child. I didn't know what to do. That week, there was a woman handing out flyers for a flat. And thanks to a frat, there he is. And now, five years have passed since a frat has saved Amog's baby. And here he is, a healthy and cute five-year-old boy. Last year, the Afrat organization distributed over 4,300 monthly packages of food to women and their families all over Israel. Afrat covered the cost of these deliveries, of the cribs, strollers, and baby kits, which were distributed throughout Israel to our mothers in need. I've been here for almost 15 years, and I could say that I have the best social work job in the world. Because the Afrata organization every year saves thousands of women from having abortions that were basically unnecessary abortions. That they felt that they had no choice but to abort their child when really the need was they didn't have enough finances, they had financial difficulties, they had too many problems to think that they could go ahead and have the baby. And when they contacted Afrat and were reassured with consultation, with emotional support, with a willing uh, volunteers with a willing ear and a soft shoulder, and then and the promise of financial assistance after the birth, it made all the difference. It made all the difference. You can save the life of a child in Israel. Stay tuned for the ICEJ report from the International Christian Embassy, Jerusalem. When Israel was established in 1948, it was exactly as the prophet Ezekiel foresaw. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will cause you to come up from your graves, and I will bring you into the land of Israel. Israel literally arose from the ashes of the Holocaust, one of the greatest miracles in human history. Still today there are some 200,000 Holocaust survivors which still live in Israel. According to the Israeli government, there are still one third of them who are in need and live below the poverty line. Over the past three years, the Lord placed a unique opportunity before the International Christian Embassy to help those heroes who survived the darkest chapter of Jewish history. In December 2009, the aid department of the International Christian Embassy Jerusalem, ICEJ aid, was approached by Shimon Sabag, the director of the social welfare organization Yad Ezra Lehaver, who was looking for support for a special project. Having been shocked to see Holocaust survivors coming to his soup kitchen for food, he realized that there was a distinct need and began a project to house 14 survivors in the building next door to the offices of the organization. When we were actually approached by the organization at Ezra Haver in Haifa, 
for Holocaust survivors, we somehow knew when we visited the project and visited the director that we had stumbled on something very unique. The project was very unique, there's nothing like it in the land and also the organization itself had a proven track record and we just knew that we had to uh, start working with them. Thanks to the generous giving of faithful Christian supporters worldwide, the ICEJ has assisted Yad Ezra Lehaver in achieving what was once just a dream, a neighborhood of multi-dwelling facilities able to provide practical care and a comfortable and safe home for more than 100 Holocaust survivors. When I actually first met him, Shimon had a, a great heart and lots of dreams, but his vision for this place was at the most to maybe house 20 people. And we started on this together, not knowing what would happen, and seeing in the end this amazing street full of buildings. The Haifa home for Holocaust survivors has captured the attention of the Israeli press and a number of Israeli leaders and dignitaries. At ceremonies marking the stages of completion, the attendance of senior government officials and leaders has given voice to the need to assist these individuals who have suffered so much. In the past year, the Haifa home dedicated a synagogue on its premises to provide a place for the survivors to participate in Shabbat services and observe Jewish holidays. The synagogue also provided the opportunity for some of the survivors to have their bar mitzvahs, since many of them were denied this rite of passage due to being interned in concentration camps. The Holocaust survivors are very old. They are from their end 70s into their 90s. And are quite a lot of them who are poor, they cannot live by themselves anymore, and who are lonely. And that's actually why it was so necessary to have a home for them, where they could feel cared for, and they would be able to live their life in security and uh, in a good atmosphere. I didn't expect in my life that I'm going to end up here, quiet, the price is right, I don't have to pay too much. And I'm so grateful to the International Christian Embassy. After all what we went through, they built for us a home where I'm going to spend the rest of my life here. I'm going to die here. and, and uh, I am grateful to all the people in the world who are helping us. Please prayerfully consider what you can do in order to stand with us to help those last surviving heroes here in Israel. That's all for this edition of Israel Now News. I'm Yochanan El Rome. And I'm Rebecca Rand, reporting from our studio in Jerusalem. Please join us next week for all of your Israel updates.